Okay, so a lot of people have been asking you about how can we use Llama 3 with agents, and specifically, how can we use it with something like Crew AI? So in this video, I'm going to walk through how you can basically get Crew AI working with Llama 3, and we're actually going to do it on the Grok platform, which you're going to see is really quick for doing this, and we're actually going to use the Llama 3 70 billion model on there. So if you don't have an account on Grok, you will need to come in here and basically go to Grok Cloud or console.grok.com, set up an account in here. And here you can basically pick the various models. And the model that we're going to be using is this Llama 3 70B, and it's just over 8,000 token context window. So you'll need to come in here and make an API key. And currently this is all free. So you can actually use this and use the 70 billion parameter Llama 3 for free here. Okay, so let's jump into the code. Once you've got Grok set up, you need to come in and you need to pip install Crew AI, Langchain Grok. And in this case, I'm using DuckDuckGo search in here. And I've just put this together pretty quickly. So you can have a play with it. You can certainly make it a lot better. What I will do is I will walk through the example here. And then in the next video, I'll make a bit more in-depth one using Langra and showing you how you could actually take some of these ideas and flesh them out a lot more with Langraph so that you've got more control over what's actually going on in here. All right, so the goal here is that we're gonna to reply to a customer email. So we're gonna have a customer email come in and what we would actually do is we would have it set up so that we would have a script that would basically call the email account, get emails maybe once every half an hour or something like that, once every 10 minutes, bring that email in, then run it through this agent, take the response out, and then send that as a reply. So to simplify this here, I haven't actually put the scripts for calling the email server and stuff like that. Those are pretty basic, and you can find plenty of examples of those out there. But what I have put down here is some of the sort of agent flow that this would go through when you're making this. So I put down some original ideas. I've simplified it a little bit in here just to keep the, the time down. But the idea is that you get an email, you're gonna have one agent that's gonna categorize the email. So this is basically gonna work out, is this a customer inquiry? Is it a pricing inquiry? Is it a customer complaint? What kind of e email is it? Is it something that's off topic? We're then gonna basically take the email and the category, and we're gonna pass that to a researcher. Now you can see here, I've got my, I've taken my flow and I've worked out here, a simplified version of this flow. Worked out here that I'm gonna have three agents and three tasks in here. Now, to do some of the checking and stuff like that, you would add in extra tasks and extra agents in here. But the idea here is I'm gonna have one agent that does the categorization, one that basically takes that and then does research. Now, if you're building something like this for a bit more real world use, what you would want to do is actually, rather than have it research the web, like I'm doing here, you would actually build an internal RAG system where it would basically look up things from your internal RAG and then bring them back and maybe have a fall back to a web or something like that if the answer wasn't in your internal sort of database or FAQ, that kind of thing. Once the researchers got the information, it's they pass it to the email writer and they're gonna write the response back using the information that we've got here. All right, first up, you need to basically set up your Grok API key. And we're going to basically use this to call the actual Llama 3 70 billion model in here. All right, I've got a little utility function in here. I explained that in one of the previous videos. I'm not going to go through that here now. And I don't really use it that much in this one anyway. All right, setting up the Grok LLM here. This is pretty simple because we've got the Langchain package in here for Grok. So we can basically just import a chat Grok model. I'm just gonna call that Grok LLM. You can see here I'm passing in Llama 3 70 billion. Because my actual key is already in the environment, I don't need to do that again, but just showing you there if you wanted to do something like that. All right, I'm gonna basically bring in the tools, some of the key things from my previous video about making crew AI stuff in here. And next up, we need to set up our agents. So here I'm going to basically just make a class with each of the agents this time and a class with the tasks. And that's more important for the tasks than the agents here. It's basically 
what I'm doing here is going to instantiate these. And for the tasks, I'm going to pass in the email so that it can use the email in there as well. We can see here, our first agent is basically a email categorizer agent. And I tell it, okay, these are the categories I want. Price inquiry, customer complaint, product inquiry, customer feedback, off topic. Now you could add a lot more here. Obviously I've just done this quite simply. I put in a backstory, you're a master at understanding what the customer wants when they write an email and I'm able to categorize it in a useful way in here. So the category, I think, just helps to guide the LLM of how to respond and how to respond back. And if you're building this for a sort of production system, you'd want to log exactly like what percentage of your emails were complaints, what percentage of them were various different tasks and stuff for this. All right, the researcher agent. So once we've got the email category, the researcher agent's going to basically look at that and is going to do some research on the web here. Now, if it doesn't think that search will help, it will just put no search needed. And if it doesn't find anything useful, it will basically respond with no useful research found in here. And obviously each of these is going to correspond with the, the tasks for this. The first task is doing the categorization where you can see we're passing in the email content for doing that. And then the second task is going to be doing the research and we're also passing in the email content. And we're passing in the context of the categorized email for this. Now, for each of these ones, I'm outputting a text file just so we can look at the end and see, okay, what was the email category? What was the research info? And then obviously, last off is going to be writing the email. So here I've put in a little bit of info about if the customer email is off topic, then we should get some more questions for this. How to address the different categories of things. Now, you could actually flesh this out a lot more and make this part of the prompt a lot longer to get very specific about certain things. I always wanted to sign off the emails in an appropriate manner from Sarah, the resident manager. So I guess I was thinking of this as being like a resort that someone is writing about the resort, that kind of thing. And one of the things I could have done is actually put in a lot more context about what the business is or what the resort is. You'll see later on when I ask it some questions that are really off topic, because they're perhaps a price inquiry, even though they're not a price inquiry about the resort, it will try to address that and it will try to answer that in here. All right, so the last task is actually drafting the email. You see, we basically have some more things in there about just that we want it to be simple, polite, to the point where we're going to respond, etc. Again, we're passing in the categorization of the email and the research info there for this. All right, so... Here I've got the emails. I've got four emails in here. So let's start off with a really simple email of, we've got, hi there. I'm emailing to say that I had a wonderful stay at your resort last week. I really appreciate what your staff did. Thanks, Paul. So you'll notice the names of the people doing the emails. Now, what I'm going to do is instantiate the two classes for agents and tasks. And then I'm going to basically, you know, instantiate my different agents. And I'm then going to instantiate the tasks, passing in this email that I just created up there for this. I then basically build the crew. I pass in the agents and tasks, same as we've looked at in one of the previous videos about crew AI in here. And we can now kick it off. And you'll see that it actually operates very quickly in here. So it's gone through, it's taken the email in, it's coming up with a category. It's decided that's customer feedback is the final answer, you know, for, for that. It does some research. Now it is doing some errors with DuckDuckGo in here. And honestly, I would probably rewrite the DuckDuckGo if I was trying to do something serious to be more of a helpful tool for this. We can see that it's finally done a search where it's got it going. It comes back with some answers about responding to customer gratitude. So it's definitely on the right track with this. And then finally, it comes down to actually writing the email out. And you can see that here we've got this final answer out. Dear Paul, we're thrilled to hear you had a wonderful stay at the resort last week, etc. All right. Now, if we go through just cat out these text files, we can see that, you know, what actually we got along the way. So the final sort of draft email is here. That's done quite a nice job. We can see that, yes, it got customer feedback. And you can see that the research basically just got respond with personalized appreciative tone, and it gives us some tips for the, the email writer. In. 
Let's try it with a different email. Okay, so this is going to be a complaint email. So the email here is, hi there, I'm emailing to say that the resort weather was way too cloudy and overcast. I wanted to write a song called Here Comes the Sun, but it never came. What should the weather be in Arizona in April? So that's obviously hinting towards the research part. I really hope you fix this next time. So let's run this through and see what we get out here. And you'll see that because we're using Grok, this is really flying through at this. This is pretty amazing that we're using the Llama 3 70 billion model. And you see it's already finished in here. It's just going through so quickly. So we can see that sure enough, our research agent decided Arizona weather in April. It got some information back of what the temperatures should be, etc. It then basically took all that information and it wrote a final answer. Dear George, thank you for the time to share your concerns about the weather during your recent thing. I understand the cloudy it may have been a damper on your plans and I apologize. So it's handled that quite nicely. Thank you again. And I hope that you'll get to write the song. Here comes the sun soon. And again, again, we can see that it's sticking to this Sarah resident manager as it goes through here. And sure enough, yeah, if we look at the different things, we can see that was a customer complaint. So it categorized it very nicely in there. We got nice research. Let's just do one more to finish up. And this one is going to be an email from Ringo. And the idea here is that this one is more off topic. Okay. So you can see that we basically instantiated everything. We kicked off the crew. It's gone through. It has actually worked out that this is off topic. The email, by the way, is why can't I get to sing? And it's already finished. So I didn't even get that much time to talk through it. Now, again, we, we are getting this problem here around the query. So we could actually rewrite the tool for doing that. That would be pretty easy to fix in here once we see it. But it actually does work out eventually that, okay, it should just pass things. Now, in this case, it didn't, it returned no useful research found. Like there wasn't really useful research for why can't Ringo get to sing more? And we can see that, okay, we've got the response back. Let's just come through and, and look at these. And we can see we've used a lot of tokens, right? We've used like a whole bunch of tokens in here going through these requests. And because we're doing it on Grok, it's just so quick going through this. All right, dear Ringo, thank you for reaching out to us. I'm happy to help you with your concern. However, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by why can't I get to sing? Could you provide more context? So again, it's following the instructions nicely there. And that shows the quality of the Llama 3 70 billion model that it is able to handle these things pretty nicely in this case. Uh, again, signed off nicely from Sarah, the resident manager. The email category was off topic and the research was no useful research found in this one. So as always, the collab for this and the code for this is basically in the description. Have a play with it yourself and experiment round with changing different things with this. I would say I do find crew AI often hit and miss that can be quite finicky to get certain things working. But when you've got a good model like this Llama 370 billion, we can see it's really up there in comparison to Gemini Pro, the 1.0, perhaps not the 1.5 and one of the Mixtral MOE models as well in here. It's certainly interesting to sort of look at this and have a play with it yourself. Like I said, in the next video, what I'll do is I'll take this idea and we'll flesh it out with Langgraph and we'll add in some more checks for this. And perhaps I think I, there I will also do a version with Olama. So just as you can run this with Grok, we could have also done this with Olama with perhaps the 8 billion model. Maybe I'm not going to get as good results out of the 8 billion model compared to the 70 billion, but you can still get some good outputs out of this. So anyway, as always in the comments, let me know what you thought, what works for you. I'm very interested if anyone comes up with some tips about how to do it better with this, that would be really cool. If you've got any questions, put them in there. And if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.